Andre, if you want to bring us in with your opening. Yeah. Uh, greetings in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Um, I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. Mm -hmm. um, anybody have anything they want to hit on? I'm going to close out some things. Thank you for nobody reminding me about recording, but I remembered halfway through the reading. So I'm like, you know what? I could just do that later and put it in there. So I'm you proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> but by all means, the floor is all of yours. I found it interesting that um, they mentioned that the rituals described in the Esmeralda Sweetwater book were legitimate, even though it was fiction. Yeah. Oh, but it was that. Oh, Ed, you're muted, honey. Sorry, I muted everyone in the middle of their reading. Let me hit S on you. Then there you go. Maybe work. Trying now. There you go, bud. Hello. There you go. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Love you all. Love you too. Uh, hey. I was going to say, I've been reading the Esmeralda Sweetwater book over the week. So I'm really glad he kept bringing it up. You know, uh, and can really I just say, of you. the rituals they describe in it are exactly how you're supposed to think about it when you do the Golden Dawn rituals. Like, so many of them are basically like, like perfectly written down. Like, when I'm, when I'm doing the, the, you know, LBRP or like, well, that, that's exactly how I visualize it. So, you know, when he's talking about, like, did we get this bit right in the, in the Esmeralda Sweetwater book? And Ra's like, yep, that's spot on. Honestly, it, 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 it's, it's kind of perfect because in my head, they wrote it down perfectly. I mean, don't be wrong. Loads of the rest of the book is, is a little bit weird. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, if, if they're saying that the entire book is factual... Uh, I'm, I'm I'm not going to believe that. But when it comes down to the actual kind of metaphysics written in there, loving all of it. Yeah, F from what I gather, it was uh, it's a fictional book that was yeah. uh, written to portray these rituals. I, I personally, as as I'm reading through it, yeah, I kind of feel like you know the whole thing about Carla being you know a sixth density wanderer coming back, and that's why she's the best channel and blah blah blah. I feel like this is kind of intuitive, like Kelontic knowledge that she's been carrying like forever, you know, and, and they, you know, when they were writing a screenplay and when they were like, you know, putting together the like story, you know, I think that his GD experience with like, you know, actually doing the rituals and her kind of like, you know, somewhere up there knowledge is what kind of wrote that book. I'm going to have to read it now. All right, can I just say as well, he gave away the bloody end. I'm, I haven't finished it yet. And he's talking about like the end of the book in that, that session right there. I mean, bro, <laughs> come on, man. Like, it's giving away the end. It's just unfair. You will to read it. <laughs> exactly. I was, I was all excited. Like, how are they going to fix this? Now I know. Thanks, Ra. <laughs> it appears we need interdimensional uh, spoiler alerts. That's it, hundred percent. From nineteen eighty one. What's the author's name? Well, it's, it's written by Carla and Don. It's oh, basically okay. their kind of fictional book. From oh. from what I can make out, it's like before they started doing much of the channeling work. It seems like it seems like Carla already knows what's going on it, in, they in, like, have lots, it on amazon it's on yeah. amazon yeah it's, oh. it's on the the ll yeah. research you can get it you can get it on, L, on the ll research website that's right yeah. oh, yeah. all right I, I put that. the link in the chat yeah oh, okay. you, you put it in last last week I, I just i just went on there and found it it's a really lovely story like it's a beautiful like fun book it really mm -hmm. reminded me of a has anyone read a book called the celestine prophecy mm -hmm. Anyone heard of that? Yeah, yeah, I read yeah, it. Yeah, I heard of it. That's it a fantastic good. book. But it reminds me of that. It's this kind of like an exciting adventure story that has just got like 
chock full of metaphysics chucked in every single place they can pack it. And yeah, that's that's the crucifixion of Esmeralda. It's 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 kind of a bit of a silly story, really. But all of the science, like the, the metaphysics in it is just just perfect. What was it called, that book you just mentioned right now again? Philistine. The Crucifixion of Esmeralda Clearwater. No, no. The one that you just asked if we all the read. Celestine Prophecy. Oh, uh, the Celestine Prophecy by James Red, Red, Redfield. Okay, it, it's you. a beautiful book. Beautiful, beautiful book. It's incredibly written. The second one, uh, the, the Tenth Insight, is actually a bit depressing. But the first one is just amazing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the, the first one is good and the rest are uh, not, not so great. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, they kind of lose momentum in the kind of resonating. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Mm -mm -mm. Did anyone else have any questions or comments about the uh, session? Okay, there's loads, there's loads in there. Well, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what the overall take is on the infiltration of negativity into the golden dawn and how it you know was referenced there i wonder what 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 do you all know about that well f could someone first okay clarify what you mean by golden dawn i'm not sure i've heard that term i'm okay, not could i am i am a neophyte level member of the golden dawn the only reason I joined the Golden Dawn is because Ross says to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, before that, I thought like you know, Hermetics is has, has got to be evil. Yeah, it's it's far too close to the Masons for my liking. Uh, but then you know, like, like I got headhunted by wizards and said, "Come and join the Golden Dawn." So you know, I did. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, most of it is absolutely like Ra says. It's you understand the, the simple disciplines, you know, the astrology, the Kabbalah, and the tarot, and you put them all together into a system that kind of gives you a hermetic path, you know, to enlightenment, mm -hmm. I suppose. The, the main problems I've found with it has been if you listen to the uh, uh, Ashen Naya Dean Voyager stuff. Uh, she talks about how the hermetic tree is wrong. Mm. And, you know, she she goes about she talks about it as like the dark star death mechanics or some nonsense. But it, when when I first saw the 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 sacred geometries of the hermetic tree, like I, I didn't get how it works. How is every single other sacred geometric pattern in the world has symmetries, has correlations. Mm -hmm. Why, why has that one just got loads of bits missing and it doesn't add up to what it should? You know, now a large chunk of like the Golden Dawn comes down to this Kabbalah based, you know, mysticism, which don't get me wrong, is incredibly complete. And basically you can connect anything in the universe to it in, in a perfect way. It's beautiful. But why doesn't it have the extra dots? So. Who knows? Just my opinion. Where's Trevor when you need him? I feel like he would have an opinion on this. <laughs> or a thought. Like, if you want, I can put up like like the Cicero and the uh, uh, Israeli complete guys to the Golden Dawn on the web chat and you guys make your own opinion. You don't actually need to go to the temple to join the Golden Dawn. And one of the things that Ra says is that it is the path of the white magician. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things about the Golden Dawn is is love is about experimentation. It's about kind of like learning things and in, incorporating them to, to build a bigger system of high magic. You know, uh, don't get me wrong. A lot of that can go astray. You know, Alistair Crowley didn't always get things right. But, you know, that incorporation thing, I suppose, is kind of how we learn and progress. And the Golden Dawn is very good at that. If you want to be a white magician and do things in the right way, it's got all of the ways to do it in there. In, in my opinion, I don't know if anyone else has any in, in like. So, what did you ask again, then, Robert? Uh, in, in... Well, because uh, kind of the studying I had done back in the 
late 1970s on the Golden Dawn, Alistair Crowley specifically, back then I was, I, were, I don't know if this is true. I, it's, it's been a while since I've encountered this information. However, there was a time like during World War II in the 19, like 1943 or 44, when Alistair Crowley was publicly called out to be the world's most evil man. This is while Adolf Hitler was running amok in Europe doing his dirty oh, work. Really be some type of evil, that's the case. So they were calling the man who's running the Golden Dawn the most evil man on the planet at the same time as Hitler. Kind of so, just say it, right? And he, he was a like, warlock, right, or something like that. Oh. Uh, he started actually calling himself the beast. That's how he self-referenced. Right. Yeah, when yeah he but that was Egyptian actually like museum. well after he left the Golden Dawn. So, so like like while he was in the Golden Dawn, he kind of felt restricted with what he could do, because the Golden Dawn is all about kind of you know you're 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 on the the white pillar, but you know you can you know do a little bit towards the black pillar, but yeah, you're a good you're a white musician. Whereas whereas I think that Crowley was never happy with that. He just yeah. literally wanted to understand magical power. And if you look no. at like Salima and the, the other kind of things that he did, like read the book of lies, you can you can really tell when he changed after leaving the Golden Dawn to be, in my opinion, far more negatively polarized. Yeah. Uh, I mean, being addicted to heroin didn't help either. Hey, but yeah, mm. like you know, but it was it was like it was like post-Victorian time. Everybody was. Yeah, mm -hmm. cocaine too. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I was just looking at the Wikipedia page and Golden Dawn is founded by some Freemasons like a, a while before Aleister Crowley. And and I concur with Ed that uh, for, from what I read of Aleister Crowley, he joined them for a short period of time and then he went off to do his own thing. And notably, I think, interestingly, that neither Hitler nor Aleister Crowley graduated on the service to self path. They, they didn't graduate at all. They, they, they were both in the sinkhole of indifference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I know I was just uh, commenting on the, the public stage of the time, how they were labeling him because they, it would almost make more sense too, that if the world is calling him the most evil, then therefore he must not be <laughs> because they, they typically are telling us misinformation, disinformation, whatever. You know? I, I think also that uh, because uh, the majority of people are in the sinkhole of indifference, what the majority identify and with uh, neutral entities or, or like non-polarized entities the most. And so it's non-polarized entities that seem to get a lot of uh, fame. Like like Hitler got a lot of fame, and Himmler is like just the secondary figure, whereas Himmler uh, was the one that actually polarized uh, negatively, you know. And uh, like Aleister Crowley, also very famous dude, also didn't polarize, and you know, <laughs> the, the, and, but but he, you know, like both both of them have huge followings. I think that if you actually look at Alistair Crowley's work, though, you can see why he didn't like, like polarize, like uh, negative. Yeah, essentially, when you look at it, don't get me wrong. He had like the one of the biggest egos ever. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to say the truth, even if it sounded evil. But like when you actually look at the intentions behind a large chunk of the way he did things, they were actually pretty pure. And like I agree, like him being labelled as like the most evil man alive, he's just silly, yeah. But then that was the persona he was trying to put out to everybody. So it's not surprising that people viewed him like that. He was like, "I'm the beast. Satan's my best pal. We have orgies all day. What did what did what do you expect to happen?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he felt connected to that one uh, a statue, I believe, of an Egyptian deity in the like a London Museum of Egyptology. And he was, he felt connected to that granite sculpture. Then he noticed the number 
that it was. It was catalog number 666. <laughs> <laughs> so he felt that was a, a like a, a a verbal like statement going, you are the beast. That, that would not surprise me. Yeah. Can I just say in the in the Golden Dawn, you have to kind of like all meditate and try to meet Thelema, which is the same kind of goddess that he based his entire cult round. And uh, from from what I can make out, she's really nice. How do you spell that? Uh, uh, oh man, don't ask the dyslexic guy to spell <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, look at look knowing at the, you're the, dyslexic, I know which letters to move in. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's got a third at the beginning uh, like a lemma a lemma it's t-h-e-l-a-m-a -A. there you oh, go okay. see yeah uh the the well, book then. of lies i would say is is one of the the best bits that crowley wrote because that's kind of just before he started the thelema thing and uh it's got the kind of best of both worlds. It's got all the GD stuff that he based, but it's also got his kind of bringing in of the Eastern things. And, you know, because uh, the, the, the Golden Dawn is very heavily based in the kind of Hebrew mysticism. Well, that's uh, what I thought, it, it yeah. Doesn't, I it it mm -hmm. doesn't kind of allow much room outside of the, 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 those building blocks that it has. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and, and Alistair Crowley was a big believer in just finding loads more blocks to add you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and I, that's reasonable i appreciate clarification on him though i like i said i was going on really old memories of that stuff too so can i, I just say weirdly my favorite book of his is actually diaries of a drug fiend and that's got nothing to do with the occult <laughs> and why it's is a that? really good book Hmm. Right. Let me see. Um, I mean, back maybe. then in the forties, it, it wasn't in the forties, and oh, a little earlier that the seance thing was really heavy and hot going on. And so, if you made yourself into like a um big gangster wizard warlock, whatever you want to call it, that the press will come and the money will come. And I don't know what he was worth or what kind of monies he made, but obviously he was well known. Because I think I've even watched some stuff on him on on, on the History Channel or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I think that um, that's like that's like rock, rock, Madonna, take Madonna, sex sells. Back then, sex sells. It still sells. And so when she first started, it was all sexy and all that, you know, and, and she kind of tamed down a little bit. But, I mean, <laughs> if you think about it in that way, that the big bad – Satan guy or Lucifer or whatever, black magic and I'm the beast, that sells. That's like Ozzy Osbourne ripping a, a bat I, or whatever, a fake <laughs> bat head or whatever on stage. And I mean, that that just uh, put him in the book of records, you know. <laughs> so it sells. I, they, you know, they, that, they say, uh, yeah, he was, he, he got extremely famous and popular in the mm -hmm. occultic circles. And in fact, uh George W. Bush is rumored to be his great grandson. Who oh, is uh, Alistair Crowley's? <laughs> oh have you heard, have you heard yeah. about Disney? <laughs> that, well... that he did a, he did a, a spell for Walt Disney before the company really got going, saying that oh. it was gonna be this like multinational take over the world kind of corporation. It did. <laughs> it oh happened. my god, how powerful is Crowley? <laughs> But my my thing is in this Golden Dawn I was reading up on it. They don't want any um, talk of you know Satanism or any of that. It's strictly you know good good white stuff, not the the dark and whatever makes white magic versus dark magic. Um, I guess it's however you wield it, you know. I, I, you know like, like I was saying the other day, you know, you've got the two pillars. You've got the light pillar and the dark pillar. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the middle pillar. Right. Now, now the white, the white, uh, the golden dawn teaches you to follow the middle pillar, but it always says that you should be doing the middle pillar to try to aim towards the good pillar. So, mm -hmm. so all of your actions are based in love and and to the white pillar. But 
you are you you take the middle pillar because it's where you have the most control. You can control the evil mm-hmm. while you approach the light. You know, like, mm-hmm. and that that's the whole kind maybe of that's why Ra, maybe that's why Ra said to do that. You know? Yeah, maybe that's why he said to you know go ahead and learn the the techniques oh. or I don't know. Well, I, I didn't I find like him uh, it recommending it at least in oh, the oh. Law of one context. Oh, oh okay. I hear but, someone. Yeah, I was trying. Yes, I was wondering if I could interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, it's the light and the dark is just is just one. So when you look at light and you try to categorize it as something, and the dark as something, it really isn't. It's just it's it's one. You oh yeah. Yeah. You can't yep. have you can't, you can't you can't have dark without light, and you can't right. have light without dark. And the dark is not evil. It's the power, it's the frequency. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to learn both sides. They have to play each other to be the middle. You have to play both sides to be the middle. So just- I agree, I agree. And that's, that's uh, like, has anyone else read Tom of the Nine? Like, uh, Only Planet of Choice? Well, no, we need this list, this book of lists. I'm writing it down. I got yeah. you. Because there's a... Because the only planet of choice, like Tom of the Nine, he talks about how if you think of the body as like a magnet, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, then the heart chakra is the middle point, right? And that's where love is, mm-hmm. right? And that's that's why it's the most powerful thing because that's the central point. Now, if you look at a magnet, that central point is like the dipole moment. It's where there's no force on it whatsoever, mm-hmm. not positive or negative. It's, it's the central point. And what Tom of the Nine says is that we should all be aiming to reach that, central because that's where oneness is yeah where there's no forces on it where you are like pure and one and like in the moment in that that it's, that bubble it's actually right? so so oh, excuse me go no, go on it actually is a force it's called the negative it's called the neutral force so this is where it neutralizes the two forces everything well, that's is, it like every yes everything is a trinity it has to be a trinity you have to have positive you have to have negative what neutralizes is called the neutral force. So yeah, that's like equilibrium, you know, however you want to define it, is that is that point in the center where there's no forces applied to it, mm-hmm. either positive or negative. Yeah, all polarity being fixed together in one thing, yeah, is is the oneness, is is the is the the, the resolution of the paradox. You know, uh right, it's called the neutral well, just... force. I wanted to mention that my understanding of the LL archives and, and, and the raw material is that um, if you were to say to take that th- three pillar analogy, they would just say, go to the white one and like ignore yeah. the other two because yeah, yeah. the middle, the, 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 the black one is the service to self path. The middle one right. is the lost, the sinkhole of indifference. Oh, sure. And then the white one is the service to others path where you open your heart. And then no matter if people are being mean to you, no matter if they're being nice to you, you you forgive and love them unconditionally and are moved with compassion to, to help See, them. Now, now, in the Golden Dawn current thing, they talk about that same thing, the, the polarities. But they say that if you just go for the pillar of mercy all of the time, like Ra says, yeah, then essentially you allow evil to do whatever the fuck it wants because you have complete compassion to evil yeah so you will yeah. allow that to do anything so the only way that you can actually be good yeah is to always aim towards the white pillar but never let the eve be do evil to evil yeah right well, and, and, and it, by it, doing that you are doing good right so so that creates the middle pillar effect yeah that that now, I, I, now I would I would say the the sinkhole of indifference of what you're talking about is actually that seventy percent service to other that most people sit at. Yeah? Service and to self, yeah. Mm-hmm. Service to self, yeah, yeah. That most people sit at, yeah. And you have to make a decision to go to service to other, uh, service to other, yeah, and and work at that, yeah, to get over the line of the middle pillar. Yeah. So yeah. I would argue that. You know, uh, uh, you've got the two polarities, but most humans are here. They're not in the middle. Yeah. And mm. in order to get to the middle, you have to go from the, the indifference part, which is that bit in the middle of service to other and the center over the line to service to other. 
Yeah, yep. which means that essentially if you aim for the middle pillar, yeah, as long as you're always doing it from a place of love, you're going to graduate at third density, uh, fourth density. Yeah, right. whereas if you know, no one can love all of the time, because if you love all of the time, yeah, yeah, you'll be a Buddhist monk and everything will be like beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but across the board, evil is still going to come and kill your village while you sit and watch and go, I forgive you. I love you guys. Kill all my friends. I don't mind. Yeah. So, so the middle pillar is essentially the most powerful place. I kind of have this thing too, yes, where like say something like that happened. Um, I would have... <laughs> I would probably have to, somebody who's going to kill my kids or people, anybody, I would probably have to step in. I'm going to say, and you should, that is me. That is, that is absolutely me. I will step in front of them. I mean, I've, you know, that, that is how I work. Yeah. But but you're not going out and pillaging people for no, 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 no. no. That's it. That's exactly. But am I going to, and how, how do you, um, but the point is, right, okay, you, you would fight and defend your family because of love. Yes. Yeah, right. you would be yes. fighting and doing evil to those others, yeah, to defend the people that you love, to, to, to go towards the white pillar. Yeah, you can do, mm-hmm. you know, negative mm-hmm. actions to negative energy and still be going yep. positive. Right. Uh, LL Archives mentions that uh, they they only mentioned this one time, but uh, basically that it is possible to uh, if to have your heart active, and then if if you have all of the all of the chakras active up to the heart, and including your wisdom chakra, then and pretty much only then you can uh, say kill. Uh, what do you call it in a correct way or, or something like that? Um, if, for instance, uh, like the examples you guys were describing to like defend your loved ones or uh, uh, that kind of things. Uh, but o- oftentimes, uh, like e- even for instance, the example that you gave where the person had their heart open and just allowed themselves to be killed like Jesus, uh, they still get to graduate because yeah. it, opening that heart is is the most important thing. And not everyone has wisdom. Uh, that's the thing is like, because say, for instance, they are not wanderers, uh, and probably many of us are, <laughs> but uh, if they are not wanderers, then they don't have those lessons of wisdom to rely upon. So really for them, the main focus is the heart. Um, and then it would be much more iffy kind of with the wisdom oh, teachings that they don't get. And it'd be much more iffy. So but if I protect, <laughs> I love, and I don't have wisdom, then, uh, then I'm, fucked <laughs> can i also just say though yeah any of those people that get killed by any negative entities or whatever they chose that incarnation yeah right at the beginning they knew that they were going to get killed by some negative entity they chose that path and whether they know it or not whether their ego tells them that is that is what they were always going to live and they 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 were essentially a sacrifice to that person's negativity. You know, if you go to the middle pillar and you just, you you would happily give yourself to feed that negative entity's want, that is a massive act of sacrifice and that is a massive act of service to other. Yes. Even yes, if, exactly. even if what they're doing is massively service to self. Yeah, yeah. So right. Take the, the <laughs> ego of yourself out of it yeah, and just purely the actions that happen as she was an entity, then dying because of some evil fucker is actually an incredible karmic release. Yeah. You're exactly right. <laughs> and I like the fact that, we, that negative is coming up because there really is no such thing as evil and good. That's mm. man, man's creation. Yep. Ra talks about negative positive it's it's negative just means ignorance lack of knowing so separation it oh, yeah, means it's lack, separation lack of, and, and of, attraction it means that lack, it's it's you oh i guess i can't finish speaking sorry go ahead sorry it means lack it means ignorance if that's what negative means lack of it means lack of knowing so 
when you when you look at positive, that means knowing. But both are still one. This is the point that I'm trying to make is that as long as we keep seeing separateness and not seeing that they serve each other, mm -hmm. because it's just one force, which is called the neutral. It's the neutral grounding force, which is called love. So you have if you try to progress toward the law of one, then you have to create in your mind not a separateness in negative and positive. If you do evil and good, which is a man creation, you will surely stay separate. Surely stay separate in your consciousness. I, I, I totally agree. I feel that kind of like with uh, when it comes to this search for oneness, yeah, like positive and negative polarity in every regard falls apart. That's what I was saying about Tom, you know, what Tom of the Nine was talking about, that 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 really, you know, at Ra, across the board, Ra teaches positive polarity teachings of the law of one. Yeah, and uh, whichever way you read it, he's always trying to get you to go to the, the positive polarity. Right? Don't Correct. be wrong, he's, he's totally right. But then if you look at Tom of the Nine, he's saying that everyone should be, uh, ideally, everyone wants to be, you know, positive polarity, oneness. But in our incarnation, where we are, the, the centre point is where we should be heading. Other things, like, has anyone read uh, Seth, the Seth material? Mm -mm. Yeah. Because in that, oh, I, a I lot, I think that a large chunk of what he says is quite negatively polarised. Yes, it's, I It's agree. far more about the self. I agree. You know? Yeah. So, so I think between the three, you've got a picture of, you know, negatively polarised, not, not, not evil, because Seth isn't evil at all. Yeah, he just gives a much more service to self view on the same material. And then, you know, you've got Tom of the Nine who says, you know, this central point is where you should be. And then you've got Ra who's saying that's where you should be. Like the, the positive, everything, beauty, love and light. They all say like, exactly actually, the same information. He, yeah, actually, he does not. He you have to see what he's talking about because you can't have positive without the negative. What he's well, of saying, course, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like that, what he's that, saying they all just describe the different extremes of the same thing. Into positivity. That, see, that is, I'm just going to let you know, I'm, I'm the high priestess of Ra. I wasn't supposed to say that, but I am the high priestess of Ra. Cool. And, I, I, I just so, wanted to, at a clarifying point, uh, based on uh, the Love and Light archives, is that the positive emanate uh, that uh, they're positive because uh, they're outgoing. Uh, the light kind of emanates from them there because they're service to others, whereas the uh, service to self are negative because they're they're sucking in services. Mm -hmm. uh, so so they're dark because all of the light comes to them. Uh, so 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 they're sucking it in, and that that's why you you need both polarities. You need Correct. in order to have service to others, you need some people that want the service. Correct. Um, and and so so yeah, you you have both in that regard. Right, because ultimately, you, everything exists by the Trinity. He had he's alluded to that, but he has not mentioned it because at that time it was not needed. Because People would not understand it. Now, I don't know. I'd, I'd say it's about Trinity is a lot. We're in a different time. So now, what he's bringing to me, I am the priestess of Rod. It's the Trinity is the manifestation of all things. So you have to have positive and negative. They have to merge. When they merge, they become the neutral force, which is love. It's like the circle in a dot. Your consciousness. Well, where's free will involved? That's an illusion. Yeah. Okay, no, 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 no. no. Ra, Ra says, Ra says, yeah, that the first distortion was free will. Yes. Yeah, from the minute he, for the, the minute that the creator yes. exploded into energy, every single thing had free will to do what it wanted. Uh, every that's... single stream of energy, right? Then yeah. the only other thing that it gave it was love, right? And that, that was the balancing force. The, the free will just let everything do what it want, but Love is a thing that's always going to draw it all back together. True. Yeah. But free will is a, it's a distortion, but yet it's a reality for physical being. 
Um, but, but, but love isn't distortion and a reality for physical beings too. That's, that's the whole point. None well, of this love, really exists if there the was oneness. Reality. Love is the only reality. But you have to get to know love. You have mm. to come back to love. And so to come back to Alistair Crowley, yeah, love the is the law, is oh, love under oh, will. The polarization will bring you to love once you come back to that neutral point, which is mm. called the Trinity point. From the circle, we call it from the circle to the dot. The dot is the neutral, that is love. But it takes the polarization of positive and negative to come to the neutral point. Everything exists through the force of the trinity he didn't bring that forth as yet but he is bringing it now mm -hmm. you must know the trinity yeah. okay ali i think i understand what you're saying uh j just the ll archives use somewhat different language um yeah. so it sounds to me that you're talking about being a sixth density wanderer that is trying to balance love and wisdom um so uh, in order to explain um j just briefly so in a, a first density entities those are like rocks and wind and second density they're like uh bugs oh, yeah. and uh you, you know plants and they don't okay. have free will because they're part of a hive consciousness now after uh they have enough love they they graduate to third density and then they have the veil and the veil is uh it was is a later creation um where people didn't remember uh, that they're connected to the one infinite creator. Um, and th this was the veil was what allowed service to self to occur. Before that, there was only service to others and the lost. Um, and then once the person chooses, if if they choose the, uh, say, service to self path, then they, they open their third eye um, and then they they actually have more uh, intuition uh, than uh, service to others people. Uh, they're, they're more clever. Um, and uh, th then they pro progress and and fourth density and then fifth density that they they learn everything and then in sixth density they uh, can't they've they've opened all of their chakras except their heart and so halfway through sixth density uh, they can go no further without opening mm -hmm. their heart and once they open their heart uh, then they become service to others. Um, yeah. Ideally, ideally that's ideally right, but it takes. Oh, well, th there's there's no other choice for them. Right. Really? Can, I, can I just say, have you have you guys heard the channeling of Quo, where he talks about how even when you get right to the very end of the universe, right to like the, the point when everything is either one or the other, yeah, uh, the, the, the adversary will eventually get to a point where he has done so much service to self that he's literally torn the universe in half, but then he will realise that Every single bit of love he has put into himself has still been love for the creator. At that point, the whole paradox gets sucked in together. It doesn't matter whether you're good or evil, because if you love yourself, you're still loving the creator because you're made of the creator. So none of it matters. Over the longest time period you can imagine, all evil becomes good because yes. it realizes that evil is just a love of goodness in the long term anyway so yeah, that's that's true if if you become conscious of what love is he also says that love is, is a distortion and it really is because what people are being given as love is not love it is completely opposite to what really is so you also have to overcome the distortion of what love is once you do once that. again i think Quo addresses this as well at some point, Quo talks about the fact that, you know, love that we know in third density, as in you know, a, a romantic love, you know, a, a, a sexual contact, like the way that we feel about a, a, another self, yeah, uh, is only really kind of a really tiny hint of what actually love is. And, and you know, we can, we can focus on that feeling to understand what it is, but yeah. uh, on, on the unconditional green light, Ray love is right. so much fucking be... bigger than you could right. ever have for another human being that, that yeah. literally in third density it's the closest we get and it's scratching the surface yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah alia i i believe what you're or, or what it 
means to me what you're saying is is uh you're referring to kind of like lust or or from the lower chakras where it's about uh liking something because it's it's useful for you or pleasurable whereas uh when Ra talks about love it's usually uh, about the heart chakra so so from from the heart it's unconditional the love is unconditional because you realize that we're all one it actually has a secret part to that but i because of the law of confusion, I can't disclose that yet. But there's also a compartment to unconditional love. Everything has its polar pol, polarization, its two sides. But in essence, it's one. It's always going to be one. Everything is always going to be one. But opening up your heart, learning what love is, which is connected to the soul, you have to get to that point. This is why he, he stressed that there are two systems. He highly pushes two systems. You have to go through a system of, of the training of your, your inner being to your outer being, backwards from your outer being to your inner being. Mm -hmm. That training helps to polarize. We call it re reconciliation of your positive and your negative side. So it's, it's a process. It's called the great work. There's weirdly no bringing this back to the golden dawn you know with the whole hermetics and the whole golden dawn philosophy the entire all of it is a process to do the great work like you just said it right. is going through the separate of the tree of life yeah step by step analyzing the person that you are the 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 the, the different forces that are put onto you by, by the different planetary bodies or the different, you know, the archetypes of life, you know, following the tarot, which is essentially the hermetic Bible, all the way through all of the different archetypes that exist to fulfill the tree of life and understand yourself so that you can, you know, follow the middle pillar right. and crystallize a human like Jesus, Correct. you know. And so when they use the two pillars, it's negative and positive. It's not good and evil. Again, that's man's terminology yeah which, there's no there's no good or evil is, can i just say though doubt, right? which, if you say if you which, say that that's man's terminology one of my favorite books is uh the um the cosmic place, doctrine disrespected like that no no, no, no i'm just saying right? one, of my, one of my favorite books is the cosmic oh, doctrine by dion fortune has anyone read that well, I, th I think Alia was uh, saying something and yeah. she wanted to finish. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I do apologize. They're good to overlap, but it's hard to hear. Um, so if I could just kind of yeah. go one at a time, that'd be great. So that way everybody gets everything done and they don't um, feel like they got cut off either. Because I, I can see we do it all the time, but it's <laughs> not I promise you that. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Love and light. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I was just saying, you know, the fact that I'm just here to assist again. Uh, I am a priestess of Ra from the temple of, of Ra. I was asked to come here because I do channel Ra. It may be unbelievable, but we are in a new cycle. Mm -hmm. And he comes through purification, which I had to go through. I can't count the number of years I had to go through purification for it to contact me. So all I'm saying is that we have to get rid of the terminology, good and evil, because that is what's corrupting and stopping people from mm -hmm. moving to the densities that they need to move to, because it's man-made. If you understand that you are electrically charged and positively charged, which is electric magnetic, that's what you are. So you have to learn to take these two forces called negative and positive to create the neutral point, which is the middle way. Um, that's all I'm That's like what Tom was saying. Be the dipole of the magnet, not the positive end and not the negative end. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the Buddha says a similar thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because what? Well, uh, can I just say, did anybody see? I mean, I don't even know whether it got posted. I put it up earlier, but I don't know whether it got approved for on the group. Yeah, today, yeah. Prove anything today. Okay, I so, so I read the scientific paper that came out like literally like like the tenth of January. Yes, yeah, so it's like as up to date as you can get. And basically, it talks about um, using lasers 
to create structures built out of photons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, so remember the uh, uh, two two sessions ago, uh, the bit where he talks about how they can use light the same way that we use the, a, a, a tool of a pencil or whatever. I can't remember the exact quote. Yeah, but uh, remember it was like two weeks ago in the session sixty seven. Because uh, that really stuck with me, the fact that they can just make things out of light. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, yeah, how, yeah. how does that work? Right. So I spent quite a lot of time meditating on that since that session. Yeah. Yeah. And, how you know, does I'd, that I'd be, work? <laughs> yeah. I, I've been Everything is tons light. Tons and tons. Yeah. Tons Found of, by love. It will let that's it. Go, right. Will loads and loads of different ways that physics uh, the, and, and what the end the way that I know occult uh, anatomy to work. Yeah. How can that? create something made of light yeah right so this paper came out on the 10th of january that basically describes how using lasers and specific magnetic fields you can build toroidal structures and other shaped structures yeah out of light mm. at photons moving in a specific progressive pattern yeah and then they can beam this into a substrate and it will hold its own shape and move, propagate throughout, you know, as, as, as literally a shape, a structure made purely of light. So they take right now, the light and they put, they put a, a, um, a scheme, a schematics on the light and it goes into a substrate and then the, the light interacts with the substrate and it takes okay, the basically, shape that basically it wants. Basically what they do is they, they create, yeah, a yeah. vibration of light right. of, of photonic particles. Okay. Yeah, that essentially, as it goes around in a system, it mm -hmm. holds its own shape. Okay. You know, they've been able to do this with magnets for ages. You can set up a magnetic field that will essentially mm -hmm. the magnetic field in the center will be able to create a shape. Yeah. And then as long as it's in that magnetic field, it will hold that shape. Mm -hmm. Right. But right, they've just been able to start doing it with photons so light mm -hmm, right. building things structures that hold their own shape independently imagine like a smoke ring you blow out a smoke ring yeah and yeah. it's just that, that that ring of smoke yeah mm -hmm. they've been able to make that ring of smoke out of light particles yeah nothing else just photons that because of the system they build it in will stay as a ring and mm. just carry on going out right now if you think about, let's like, say, when I put up about the LBRP, yeah, the light, the you know, the yeah, the, the banishing ritual, yeah. When you do that, you're supposed to essentially imagine pentagrams made of light, yeah, that you are using your consciousness to project out, yeah, as that that system, as that 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 symbol formed of light. Right now. All I'm saying is that that paper shows scientific evidence that you can build what looks to me, when you actually look at the diagrams, fucking sacred geometric patterns out of photons, and they exist on their own without needing anything else, right? If that isn't how thought forms are built, if that doesn't, if that isn't how like the symbology into light, into changing reality, it is how magic works. What? We, we're proving it with science. You can actually look at scientific papers where they are making thought forms using a laser. Yeah. Yeah. Who's to say we can't do the same thing? Yeah. They, they actually also did studies and they, they found that using lasers, they could make atoms and uh, oh, yeah, okay, but that, that's 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 essentially just organizing spin ratios. We are talking about a, like because that that's essentially making uh, uh, a quarks out of photons. Yeah, we are talking about using nothing but photons. These are just photons spinning around in a specific geometric pattern that they create a structure that will. How do they get them to structure. create the pattern? I mean, how do they get them to create the pattern? They're just literally, it's just a spin pattern. Yeah, you okay. get you get an energy field in the center and you beam them in at a specific ratio so that they create a specific movement that once okay. they're trapped in that, they, they keep spinning in that exact pattern. Oh, they can, do yeah. they have to be held by the... No, 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 no. Once, once you start it off and they all start spinning around each other, the, mm -hmm. the, the photons themselves are the things right. that hold and, it in that shape. Right, right. Right now, now they've been able to do it in a magnetic field because a magnetic field is a, is, is a stable field. So once you've built it, 
that structure will sit there. Yeah. Right. But uh, uh, does, that never, create, never does that create it. does that create an energy? That's what I mean. It creates it creates an actual a, a structure that you can observe. I know the yeah. structure, but I'm saying, is it? Are they looking to create an energy with it? It's almost like a. It's a well, uh, we're we're talking about we're talking about a magnetic field, yeah. Right. So if you get if you get magnets of a specific shape or whatever, then mm -hmm. then the magnetic field that they produce in the center of that field will create a structure. Okay. Yeah, and it will be able to hold that structure, and you'll be able to manipulate and move that structure around depending on the field that it's in. Yeah, now they've only just literally, this paper came out like two weeks, a week or so, the 10th of January, I don't know what the date is, but, you know, no time. Yeah, when they've done the same thing of creating this structure, but using like photons. Yeah, so, so the, a light particle that they've made to get into a shape where other light particles spin around each other around. to create a shape that when you take the lasers away, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right? what I want to know. You create if you take the layers away, lasers away. It's still there. Yeah. How long does that right. stay that way, though? Look, is it okay, like look, look, it... look, 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 look. We're you talking about lasers, yeah? I'm saying the right. human brain is a thousandfold right. better right. than any labor any human will ever make. Every vibration that goes down a microtubule focuses that laser into something far more that you you need you need. You need like yeah. a array of lasers the size of a building to do what your brain can do. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the analogies I like is that uh, our bodies are light bound by love and our consciousness is love informed by light. Correct. Okay, so, so I read this Manly P. Hall book the other day about um, uh, uh, thought forms. Yeah, and he says, every single thing that you think, yeah, Essentially, you create in the astral. Yeah. Every thought. Oh, boy. Have, forms, <laughs> I got some stuff forms, running yeah. out there. <laughs> forms, forms realities in the astral planes, right? Every single thing you've ever thought has, has said some kind of thing. Yeah. Now, what he says is, yeah, that we are the children of God. Yeah. We are essentially the thought forms in the reality of God. Right. Now, when we create, when we think, yeah. Those things that we think, those thought forms that we create are our children. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The same way that we are God's children. Right. Yep. So everything that you think creates something. Yeah. You are you For are sure. the mother and father of billions and billions of thought forms. Yeah. And and like focusing how you think so that the only thought forms you create, that's you know. That's populating the astral planes with beautiful living entities Think rather than the... evil ones that come from our animal instincts. Yeah. Mm. You know, and like, like the... part of you, that's one. <laughs> yeah. To call it evil, you calling yourself that. <laughs> I, I don't, okay, right, back to evil, good and evil. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the well, cosmic doctrine be... by Dion Fortune. Oh. Well, yeah. Let's let Alia. Yeah, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, that's, yeah, again, you have to be very careful with your words. Ra said, because like I said, I don't know if you heard me. Ra channels through me. It's channeling through me now. What is saying is be- Tell him I love him. With, with your words, because your words will separate. Mm -hmm. You're trying to integrate. You're trying to reintegrate. So be careful, just like you said, true words hold power so you have to make sure that your words are creating the environment of what you want to come back together it's, it's really all true. about purification too you have to go through purification there's so much you're hidden which we talk about the potentiator if you know who the subconscious mind is, then you know that that's the thing that has to be purified because from there is what creates outward. So purification is something that has to be ingrained in this process that you know everyone's going through to reconcile, purify the heart from the distortions of what love really isn't to what it really is. It's going to be it's, it's going to be needed in order to got to do the shadow work right 
Yeah. Yeah. Some people integrate your shadow. Yeah. Shadow. That's right. it. Don't don't but don't fight to, your shadows. Hug them. But you've got to yes. know what your shadows are, and that means going into the subconscious mind, because that's where they're hidden. That's what has to be unhidden. In Egypt, it was called the veils of Isis. So it's veiled within the subconscious mind. That's the thing that you don't know anything about. You only know about your consciousness. So a part of what he's saying, and he doesn't explicitly say it because he would be breaking the law of confusion, just as I have to be very careful what I say. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. Lay it on us. We can hack it. Oh, no. He can't because they want, know. <laughs> I don't want the Confederation on me. I've, come, I've been in touch with the Confederation. That is a serious thing. Ask um, them about me. They'll be like, yeah, tell that guy whatever he needs to know. <laughs> You're not going to get it out of her, okay? <laughs> yes, I like her. she did. I bet what you they would. Name up Just there say the What's your name? Oh, Amanda. Yes, because my, my students, they say that to me. They're like, when new people come in, don't push her because she is not going to say, <laughs> I am not getting in trouble. <laughs> because really, it's really, to, to, to be um, honest, right. I, would be do, I would be doing not love if I was to tell you everything. It's not love. Because yep. Yep. to discover is what brings about conscious raising. It's all sure. about discovery. So well, I'm, I'm not just... going to argue with that yet, but like I am, I am no lamb. Milk You're for no lambs, lamb. <laughs> meat for strong men. Yeah, I am no <laughs> lamb. You can lay it on me. You're the <laughs> ram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that's one of the hermetic things, isn't it? We're back to the golden dawn. What we were talking about before. You know, like it, it's it's written on the the emerald tablet. You know, like yeah. milk for lambs, meat for strong men. Yeah, if people can't hack this stuff, they're not able to mm -hmm. to to put it together and see the difference between the material and the immaterial. Yeah, then 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 why give them the keys to the universe? Yeah, right. But I yeah, just I, want to go and drive a, a large of the people that have read Ra <laughs> are no longer sheep. Yeah, we have yeah, to like we're, we're people that know enough that we're, we're strong enough to have the meats. We have to love them where they're at. It's all about love. It's all about knowing True. where they're at, meeting them, mm -hmm. and understand the unity. The unity is beautiful because within that unity, it's all things. And so we don't see a difference. I don't see a difference. We don't see. I don't either. At all, like none of these things are different, right? When we're talking about good and evil, like I was going to say before, yeah, Dion Fortune, she talks about how we define good and evil, yeah, as essentially the 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 have or have not, I think she calls it, yeah, and it comes down to the polarities of of every single energy in the universe, yeah, from minute one, from the minute it was first created. Now that's all channeled work, the same as Ra. And most of it ties in perfectly. Like, it's a brilliant book, uh, Cosmic Doctrine by Dion Fortune. And she, across the board, says that from minute one, yeah, that that have or have not, that that uh, away or towards oneness is good and evil. And, yeah, it's just a human way of defining it, but, but how it, on you a say universal it, scale, your words, it's still by using the same those thing. words, you are actually creating good. Creating it. Oh, I see. Yes, I see. You what see what I'm saying? No, 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 I, I, yeah. I, I agree so every, with you. I every agree time, with you. Everyone every should realize time. that there's no difference and there's every, no separation. Yeah, that time. good or evil are just opposite ends of the exact same scale. So the scale itself is what's important, not what you're on it. Yeah, but, right. We are but, all on that scale. We have to forgive the words too. Exactly yeah. right. What what I'm saying is that, that 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 there's lots of ways of of defining those words, yeah, and sure. positive and negative, yeah, or whatever end of a spectrum. And and I agree with you 100. percent Everyone in the universe should know oneness, yeah, and nothing else, yeah. But but in order to get that, 
yeah, like like we've all said, you need the light to understand the dark and all these other other you know yeah to get par- there right. parabolisms. Yeah, the, the fact is, mm-hmm. every single strip all of it away. There's only oneness. Yes. Yeah, like like that. There's that. There's that one polarity: evil, good, positive, negative, up, down. Well, yeah, uh, it's hey. still one pencil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Fred let, wanted to let, say something. Let, let's let, let Fred let's, speak. Let's do this for, you know, just an easy compromise. And I understand what uh, uh, Aaliyah was saying about the good and evil. You're you're manifesting the reality of it when you just when you recognize it, um, just like in, in the Bible since the beginning, when, uh, you know, the so, so-called scales were lifted from their eyes and they were able to see the difference between that so-called good and evil it's positive and negative so we understand it as positive and negative we understand that it's just positive and just negative and it's just neutral and that's what we are talking about so i think everybody in this group is well past the the evil and good (laughs) narrative so why don't we just refer to it as positive and negative and then we all know what we're talking about yeah because actually when you use that that's the orion influence the yes. Orions, the Orions you are, created you are right them. yes so i'm trying to neutralize it by saying if you bring if you use those words you bring in that energy in because words you speak manifest every word manifests so i see you lovely people i see the soul i see the family don't allow the orions to to filter in through the words because the words are a curse. The English language was created also. The pure language, when Ra speaks to me, it's in his language. The prayers are in his language. It's a beautiful language. You have to be very careful. Please, the words create this group. This words create this group. And I can see the loveliness. I can see that everybody's seeking. And what's her Desiree? She's created this beautiful group. You don't want to let the aura, they come through your subconscious mind and they make you speak because they see a gap. Because not everyone has purified the heart. And until the heart is at a vibrational level, the orions, the orons cannot come in. But if it's not there, I hear them coming in, unknowing to yourself. So use the words that Ra has given. He doesn't say good and evil because that's Orion language. Mm -hmm. I just say these words in peace. I I wanted to see if if, uh, some of the other people like Becca, Israel, Jesse, or Benny, or John wanted to say something. Michelle? If you guys, because you, you haven't had a chance yet, I, I don't know if you had a question or if you had a comment. I just like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I just, just want to make sure everyone's happy, you know. <laughs> everyone's feels included. Because I, I missed it in the reading thanks to a party I couldn't park for. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just been listening and learning. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Here. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a question. Mm -hmm. It it doesn't pertain exactly to the reading, but it actually pertains to what we were talking about, um, about words being, you know, uh, very important. We're we're creating that vibration and sending that energy out there, the influxion of that energy. Um, I don't know. We're using English. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't know what... uh, everyone's social situation is but i i really only have like two friends that i talk to um yes you got a whole group right here of friends buddy well, i love yeah. you man you're my friend i love you <laughs> yeah. I, i'm talking about i'm talking about people that i i see you know physically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um i keep a very small Come group to england man come over anytime <laughs> i have my passport All right. let's, let's, let, fred welcome, finish. My let's friend. let fred finish <laughs> but uh my question is uh my my one friend who i've been friends with him for 35 years Mm -hmm. um his 
energy, the words he speaks, it, it is like a cheese grater. Every time I'm around him, he's it's so negative. Um, I, I, it makes me not want to be around him anymore. You know how the saying goes: "You are like your five the, the five people you, you hang around the most. You are kind of like that." I, and I just, I, I'm in the last couple of years, I have changed so much. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. I know he wants to hang around me and everything. And it's just like, it's a drain on my energy to hang around him. The words, it's his words. It's, it, it is. That's what it is. Yes. I have two suggestions, if, if I may. Uh, I'll, I'll try to be brief. <laughs> um, so one, uh, the, the, um, like, if it was a very negative entity, you know, the, the, the usual is uh, just to forgive and love them and then go your own way. Uh, but uh, what I usually do is that I like to use, whenever I hear negative utterance, like say when I'm outside, is I love to use it as practice. It is kind of the mud for the lotus. And uh, so say for Opportunity instance- Opportunity for service, man. Yes. So say for instance, someone says something like hateful and then I say love you know, or, or kind of uh, like, I think about what is the opposite that is positive. And then I uh, talk about that positive thing. And the same thing you can, uh, can, um, okay, you can uh, speak positive things. And then, uh, like, I, I found that if I say, for instance, read, uh, like the LL archives or something, or if I just speak a lot of positivity, then they find the the negative people uh, find it to be uh, like disgusting, and they they don't want to be around me. <laughs> and so then it becomes mutual, and then everyone can so uh, part on good terms. <laughs> oh my that god, works. that's perfect. <laughs> Fred, 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 can I ask you a question? I've driven away by starting every sentence with. Well, Raw says. <laughs> there you go. I think I'll try that one. Yeah, great. Yeah, but I think I find it, uh, Fred, like, well, at least I feel like <laughs> your perspective and me being there, um, it's hard in that and where he's at now. And I get sometimes you do just have to separate yourself until you feel like you're in a place to be able to do exactly what Andre's doing or what how he said, which I thought was an absolute awesome ending to that. Because I did not see it going there until you're like, <laughs> well, they just, you know, just like <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Legitimately, I have the same issue here. I've always have. Um, I small, small group. Actually, I'm closer to people that don't live anywhere near me. I never met in my life. Um, and I had to separate myself as well for the sake of me, you know, at least now to wherever. Well, I guess now, but I mean, now I'm more aware Andre's at what he's saying, but before I had to completely separate myself because it is too much. It's overwhelming. It's, it's okay to pull yourself away. You don't have to feel guilty or wrong for that because you're ultimately putting your own well-being and what your mind frame in a place where it needs to be in order for you to be able to be that full person like as andre was pointing out your personal piece is what's most important yep. fred can i give you a completely different viewpoint for a moment sure go for it i don't know if you are thinking of yourself in a way that you are service to others or service to yourself but I feel like if you've known this guy for 30 years, it's like a long-term marriage. And maybe you're the one who's boring and is, he's thinking about ditching the friendship too. I would strongly suggest that if you are service to others, that you maybe say, dude, we've been friends for 30 years. We've been doing the same thing for 20. Let's go do something different. Let's grow. Let's yeah, make yeah. some memories mm -hmm. before you cut them off, right? Oh, oh, that the other actually, end of that actually <laughs> just happened in the last couple of months. He decided to start uh, singing, taking on singing at 70, 70. I encouraged him to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, I told him, I said, you have no hobbies. I have all these hobbies. You will get a get a hobby. And so he started <laughs> singing and he can't see. So I said, I'm, I don't want you driving at night you know, you shouldn't be driving at night. And he's like, well, I want to do, I want to sing in front of people. I want to do karaoke. I want to try this karaoke. So I volunteered to drive him once a week to someplace 
benign that we could go so he could sing his karaoke. And he, he has been doing that. And I, I do hang out with him once a week. I limit it to once a week. And, uh, you know, he's he seems OK with that. But he, he wants to hang out with me more. Uh, but I just I can't take it. It just it just seems like too much of a drain on me. I'm much better at being able to give him, you know, one afternoon or evening or whatever a week. And then I have a lot of good energy to give him. And then at the end of it, you know, it's not so taxing as seeing somebody twice or three times a week. How is he negative? in the like in the way that you're using it as how he I guess what he's putting out, like what is what he, is he's He's very, uh, he's seven, like I said, he's 77 years old. He's very sexist, racist, and homophobic. <laughs> and <laughs> his trifects are fun. I'm a, I'm a, so now you I'm need a, to have a, a date with a black lesbian. <laughs> I'm, I'm a divorced, I'm a divorced single guy. I have four children. Uh, one of them is 16 year old daughter. So, you know, he's clamped down on the, the, things he said about women in the last few years, which I, I actually had to have a confrontation with him about. Um, and he just, he spouts off different things and has just very opinionated uh, comments that come out sometimes in public. Uh, mm. I, I've had to talk to him about that. Like, dude, you can't just say that in front of a group of people, you know, uh, <laughs> he sounds I, like fun, dude. Oh, yeah, God, he, he sounds like a but, nightmare. <laughs> he, he's older, so he, he feels that he can get away with it. And and although I've been gentle with trying to explain to him, you know, dude, I, I you know, I don't think that I'm I, I don't know. I know you guys don't know me. I'm multiple different things. But one of them, I'm a non-traditional officiant. I, I marry people in non-religious settings, same sex mm -hmm. couples. It doesn't matter. I have a very open view with people's uh, sexual preference. I've seen a lot of people get treat, mistreated that had different sexual preferences throughout my life and my family and whatnot. And he's very homophobic and he says very ignorant things about it. And I've corrected him, but it doesn't matter. He's my friend. Uh, you know, he's still going to have those opinions. Let your children correct him. That will get his attention. You're, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, there's an... Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. a LL archive opportunity here. So those issues, you can, uh, LL Research recently got a search uh, feature. Uh, if you go to llresearch.org or whatever, and then you can uh, enter like say uh, racism or, or feminism or, 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 mm -hmm. or whatever issue you're having. Like I, I did it with strong emotions that I was having and then see what does the Confederation say about this? Mm -hmm. And then they, they are almost every topic. They have like wonderful, beautiful things to say. And then uh, you you can tell your friend that. And I think it could really help. And I also just wanted to mention that I put in the chat uh, book uh, that I made that it's a compilation of every LL archive uh, paragraph that contained the word love. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So, so, so I have a one, a PDF that you can like read and then uh, okay. uh, a printable version. It's uh, that you could print double sided pages. Weirdly, find it. that was going to be my advice to Fred. Dude, all about the love, man. He might be weird. He might be old fashioned. He might have all of these like you know, neuroses and like weird shit. But I bet that's what makes him fun. Right. And don't get me wrong. Right. It might not be how you feel, but love the guy anyway, dude. Like, yeah, love there, there must be lots of reasons why you're friends. Yeah. Focus that, on that, those. Appreciate what I'm you love about karaoke the guy, on Wednesday night. Yeah. The that's wonderful. <laughs> I still remember what you remember too. Because what, what? It's, okay, it's an illusion. Ahead. Yeah, it's a test. It's an illusion. It's actually mirroring or reflecting what you have to polarize. So he's your catalyst. She's okay. totally right. Okay, let's <laughs> let's let people finish it. <laughs> Thank you. So that's the love. See, that's why you when you have when you understand how love works, you'll see it. So. It's just the love energy coming to you to show you through them what you must polarize either something in this incarnation or your previous other presentations. We say that because there really isn't no division. 
So look at it from love. Like, what is it trying to tell me? So that I can polarize it. Once you polarize you, you're going to automatically polarize them to their level. It's a beautiful relationship. So and it's uh, another opportunity to serve. Yes. And how, does it read? Do you want to how, say something? You say? Oh. How is it oh. best for me to uh, figure out, like, like you said, with, with um, past lives and my current life and everything being the same? How can I figure out what my past lives were to see what the congruencies are to to know exactly? I want to know what the Good. I mean. If this is the catalyst, I'm yes, it's look for repeated patterns. Repeated patterns is usually coming from incarnation. If it's yeah. something that you keep getting into a block about, then it's something in this priest in this life, which is a karmic effect. So look for repeated patterns. And then when you become astute about that, then reverse it. And that, that cancels out and it actually polarizes you. Yeah, I, I agree that repeated patterns are, are a great wage, way to gauge if you are in a karmic cycle. Um, basically, wh whenever you have a repetition, that means there's a lesson there to learn that you haven't learned. It's like Groundhog Day. And then usually the answer is some kind of forgiveness and love, either for yourself or some others. And the LL archives are really wonderful for that. But to answer your question as to how to go about remembering your past lives, uh, what I would recommend is, uh, well, it, depending on how often you meditate, if you meditate a lot, then you can probably just do a meditation, a theta wave meditation. It's it's deeper than the alpha wave. And then it's kind of like, um, so alpha wave is where you're concentrated on a point. And then you kind of, you release that point and you let your mind drift a little bit deeper. And then you start getting uh, symbolic imagery and stuff. And at that point, you can ask uh, to connect with your spirit guides and then have your past life shown to you that is the most... Uh, pertinent to your current life situation and then uh, you uh, it, they will just kind of uh, open a scroll for you and then you'll just watch the video of your past life as uh, yourself in your mind's eye uh, or, or you can also go to uh, say uh, some kind of hypnotherapist uh, oh, no, to do the past do life that. don't do that Wait. if you just literally <laughs> want to learn don't very very that. simple <laughs> facts yeah there's lots of ways of doing it via tarot or runes or other ways oh. of divination yeah. but literally saying, just not, give not you what you therapy. learn in your last life <laughs> and you know what you need to learn in this one which uh, is powerful things in itself what's the issue with with hypnosis that you what's your concern on that well ross says it's because it's close closely related to trance and that's where the gateway, even in meditation, if you go into a deeper meditation and you don't have the proper knowledge of how to avoid certain densities, these entities will attack you. You have to know. That's why he says trance is a very delicate situation because it will open up gateways to entities. Um, but to, to remember... Ross says the best way is going back to the center, which means to, it's a, it's a technique if, if you want me to tell you um, mm -hmm. later. I don't want to take up a lot of time for Fred. No, 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 please, please. But, I want to know. I want to know. But it is one of, it's one of the very best, he says. And that is, you have to go into meditation. You, you go back to, in your memory. You go back like you're going back in your life. Try to remember what age, like if you all of a sudden five years old comes up, if you can remember that, think about it and try to keep going back to things you can remember until you get to the point where you can't remember anymore. You will then go into a, a safe meditation. It takes practice. Now, this isn't something that happens in one night is something you have to continue to practice because again it's linked to the subconscious mind so if you keep if you keep doing that eventually what's going to show is your last incarnation that's what's going to come up mm. okay mm. and you have to be very relaxed very very relaxed and go with the intention 
of love. And then the entities who are around, because they're constantly around, it's a collective, um, you'll be protected. Always seek protection for anything you do. Andre? Yeah. Oh, uh, I just wanted to mention something that's very often mentioned in uh, the other love and light groups is that uh, uh, service to others entities do not say don't uh, because everything is okay. There are no mistakes. And so you really have to make all your decisions inside of yourself, whether like say hypnotherapy or meditation or nothing or whatever is appropriate for you you have to do that meditation yourself and then figure out if that is the uh your life path okay. thank you all that guys it is getting it is about 9 50 almost so robert if you'd like to close this out until next time, I appreciate everyone's input. Um, this will be posted last week's wasn't because I didn't record it, unfortunately, but I will include the actual reading in this one, even though it wasn't recorded. Just so everyone knows, I'll have it up by tomorrow. And let me just clarify that. I heard him say not to say don't, but we have to address the distortions that you carry. Even though you may consciously say, this is what you shouldn't say. Your subconscious is carrying don't. So we have to always take the distortion ourselves to, to adjust to the distortions you have. Yes, we don't say don't. Uh, you shouldn't say yes or right because there is no right or wrong because everybody's perception is correct where they're at. So I just want to clear that up is that we have to meet your distortions. And until your distortions is gone, that's the only way to communicate. Once it's gone, then we can communicate on the same wavelength. Thank you for that. Robert's going to close us out. We're starting a new thing here. Oh. But thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. Together, through these wonders of technology, we are able to share. We thank Creator for this moment we can have together. We're starting the beginnings of a social memory complex. We are becoming a larger entity within ourselves. And it's with love that we share this and it's in truth. And we are thankful for all of our friends that are here with us now and the love that we share amongst ourselves. May we also find greater wisdom and truth in our life and until we meet again, always be within the light and the love. And I thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank you. One of you. Appreciate you. Love you, love you all. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Love the light of the one and the creator. Good night. <laughs>